Okay, so uh, do I address you as RG or Kevin? I mean, you, you, you can call me RG lah. Kevin is like, <laughs> not many people call me Kevin. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay, uh, so RG, thank you again for being in this uh, call it interview, call it a talk or, or chat. And I'm here to actually derive some knowledge from you and also okay. something that we can learn from you and also to, for you to share your story as well okay. from uh, going to data science seeing how it's impacted you and how you're using it at work and more yep. so uh, so thanks for here, being here again maybe yep. to get started right you can tell us a bit about yourself and what you do all right so uh, basically <laughs> I'm in this uh, so my name is RJ right so I've been, I've done music before. This one period of time I was actually doing like music. Then I shifted over to an e-commerce uh, centric company uh, based in Singapore. So I got myself into this company for about what, three years. And I've been, I've been handling a lot of, uh, you know, customers, different merchants uh, from different backgrounds. And then of course, handling day to day with a lot of uh, data related tasks. Mm. Uh, data related tasks which i find that you know i wasn't equipped at first but i think slowly i think when you when, when you get yourself into the work and you start understanding the domain uh, and then you start to have a better view on what's needed and what are the skills that you probably need uh, yeah. is is nobody doing data analysis or visualization in the company they do so most of the time if you realize uh, even though it, even if it's a startup tech company uh the way how sometimes they go about things are still the old conventional way. They still use Excel, you know, I mean, uh, you know, from, from, from the whole Data360 class, we understand the use, the need of actually using uh, SQL, you know, compared to actually using Excel and why, and why which is better and, and, and why is it good and all of that. But I think uh, even though it, it is still a tech company, there are some elements that they are still missing in that sense, which I feel like they can actually improve in that sense. Uh. So, I think my contribution is that you know I, I learn all of these things as much as I can and I try to implement this within my team and to see how we can actually sort of like be better than what we were previously. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. But but uh, this to, to understand, right? It, you you were in a different sort of role, right? You were in uh what were what role were you in in the company? So uh the the company I'm working for is called Audel, right? Mm. So previously, when I first came into Audel, I got into uh, the sales position as a yeah. business development. Uh, and then after that, I transitioned to account management for about two years. So I did sales about one year and then account management for about two years already up to now. So yeah. So doing this um, work in data and all that is something more than beyond your scope of work at the company? Uh, yeah, at first it was. I was like, hey, you know, this is, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, right? But eventually, I think it's more of like the day-to-day, -day, uh, it's the day-to-day -day bread and butter kind of thing. Right? Like, mm -hmm. I have to understand my client. And mm -hmm. the way how I understand my client is by looking at the data that I have, uh, sales, uh, customer database. And then it is not only that, but it's also... I want to provide value to my merchants and how mm. can I actually provide value to my merchants if I don't understand their business? So that's the whole reason why I sort of like think like data, understanding data, having data is great, but you need to sort of like derive insights from it. And then only then you can sort of like tell your merchants or advise them what, is, what are the best practices and why it actually makes sense. You know, mm. so for me, I find that pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Any, any examples of customers Merchants F and B benefiting from uh, using data and finding out an insight from it. You can share. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, we we do have a couple of merchants who previously they don't understand what customer segmentation is or why mm. why is it so important? Because I think they were so held back with the conventional way of uh, running business, which is all brick and mortar, right? So ever since COVID happened, it sort of like shifted. The, the, the feel a bit, right? Shifted the feel. Now suddenly everybody wants to be on board on social media. They want to sort of like be more socially present and uh, uh, online present. So I think uh, for, for what we have done or particularly what I have actually learned from Data360 and how I actually implemented it on my day-to-day my -day job is that the customer segmentation using K-means clustering. Uh, it's an uns uh, it's unsupervised uh, machine learning model, right? 
which is pretty interesting because uh, some of my merchants they have all of this data so they collected data uh, the rfm so uh, you know data related to the recency frequency and monitoring but they do not know what to do with it right so mm -hmm. and so what i did with, for them is that i got this data i put it into this machine learning model it's sort of like cluster them based on similarities and based on that then i basically uh, divide it into four categories you know like uh, customers who have high frequency high purchase and so on and using this this information what my merchant has done is that they have done their edm blast okay uh, and, and they basically personalized messages catered to this specific group of customers so it's a very because marketing these days is not like uh you know you can blanket you, you there's no blanket strategy anymore it's more but like a targeted strategy so by by having this insight they sort of like understand the customer way more better than they would uh, and, and they know where to actually uh, who to actually invest money more like promotions and all you can't be giving a blanket promotion sometimes you sort of like mm. need to distinguish which group or segment makes most sense for the promotion to be used or to be channeled to so this actually has helped them tremendously on that as well like customer segmentation k-means customers <laughs> yeah so, i mean in marketing it's more towards personalization like right now instead of a yeah. broad kind of like you know like broad marketing that yeah speaks to no one yeah. but more towards personalization so every right. feels like oh the business is speaking directly to me yeah. and the way that i want to hear from this business uh yeah. but with the merchants you work with small and big right yeah you think that this also impacts the smaller merchants also like like the mom and pop f and b stores uh you might be surprised actually the mom and pop stores are way more uh, i i feel in my experience they are more uh willing to learn oh. as compared to the the big brands out there because i feel like you know the the whole social mindset the beginner's mindset kind of thing right where yeah. you know if you if you are nobody sometimes if you really want to uh, sort of like be better you you are willing to learn on how to be better i feel like the 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 mom and pop shops are getting ever since covid i think they are getting more and more aware of the importance of uh, why they need to be socially present the importance of data and so on so that's like a silver lining in the whole pandemic eh? yeah yeah sure it's, it's like it's it's amazing man seriously like what it has done and how it actually expedite the whole uh transformation process is crazy yeah so it sounds like business is good for your end business is good for e-commerce companies <laughs> generally <laughs> yeah it's, it's good yeah all right so when it comes to learning data science right i think you also maybe speaking of the beginner mindset you also went in with sort of like the beginner mindset to things and you're very receptive towards uh learning different types of new um you know new sort of like uh staff and also new subjects in yeah. science right so when it comes yeah. to data science and picking up right yeah. uh what was your before you started right what was your right. big fear what, what what was my fear yeah. okay what's your fear my, my fear was my fear was programming <laughs> <laughs> because i thought like oh the, i mean i i don't know programming at all this year i've never i've never learned it before i've heard people saying and i've heard people saying how difficult it is so i thought going going in going in data science probably would be overwhelming because i don't know codes you see hmm. i really don't know codes yeah, but I realize it's actually it's, it's beyond codes. It's actually not only about the codes. You need to know a little bit of stats, you know, statistics. You need mm. to know a little bit on uh, communication, how you want to visualize that data to customers. So there's many aspects. So it's not only programming only. La. But I think programming, I feel like it is not actually that hard to learn. It's mm. not that hard. After, after going through the program, I realized it's actually pretty easy. And with, with all the support online, I think it is easy to actually self-learn as well, programming. Do you see yourself doing programming? Or you're I, not mean, I, I do see myself. I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm pretty serious about it as well. So I've been, uh, you know, on my free time, instead of, instead of, Netflixing, instead of Netflixing only, <laughs> I, I try to allocate like maybe like about in a week, uh, maybe during the weekends, about one, two hours just to sit down and just to learn the basics. Yeah, but yeah, so that's, that's what I've been doing. Well, I think it's really important for people to have I mean, you don't have to be like a super expert programmer, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. But, but at least you understand the concept and yes. being a manager or being someone who manages a team of people, then you understand what they're doing. Yes, then you yes. know what they're doing, you can yeah. sort of like speak their language more. Yep, yep. Do you see that happening in within your company? It is. Actually, 
the codes that we use for for machine learning and all of that, it's it's very re- replicable. You, you, all, all you have to do is just copy paste and then know where to change in, in a certain extent. Of course, this can be taught to my colleagues. You know, this could be shared, but they if they but they need to know like in what the the challenge is to know which machine learning model to use for what cases mm-hmm. or sort of like um, how can this machine learning model help you in your own domain? That is like something to to really look into as well so so i feel like that also could be sort of like shared cross shared among colleagues and all of that so we have i have been doing that with my colleagues as well so they are pretty interested to to sort of like hey you know what this is this is pretty interesting i thought machine learning is something that only geniuses you know would 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 would, would take up but actually no it's not it's not that it's not that I, I think it's becoming more and more accessible to everyone and anybody these days right yeah 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 you're right yeah what what are some um, machine learning models or, or tools that you use at, at work that you can so share? I, so K-means clustering is something that I love using, right? Uh, I have used uh, linear regression uh, to mm-hmm. sort of like forecast, uh, you know, quantity of items sold based on months for my merchants. Um, uh, then logistic regression is what I think uh, we went through the class. That was interesting because how do you know whether a person is going to leave a company or not based oh, on yeah. the data? <laughs> That was that was interesting for me, right? So, yeah, so these are the few things. Um, also, was very interested with the whole Netflix and Spotify uh, song recommendation. Actually, how they actually do it, you know. So, so it's, it's it's like I think I I just it's just a tip of the iceberg. I feel like I've just reached the tip of the iceberg. There is more to it, which I feel like for the next coming few years, I'm I'm more excited to sort of like delve in deeper and actually understand better on what it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, and, and what are some skill sets you wish you had um, sooner to support this growth that you're in right now? Sooner, probably programming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably programming. Because I, I felt like, um, so Data360 taught me how to go about, taught me the concept of web scraping. Uh, at first, like, what, what is this web scraping thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then what I, what, what I actually did was, um, you know, by... Uh, putting myself in, in this in this position where I need to learn something because I learned that from the class. So I took some time off to just sort of like learn the codes for that particular web scripting itself. Um. So just by focusing on something that I know that I can use immediately help me to sort of like understand. So programming is uh, is something that I probably want to go for, uh, like learn a little bit more deeper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, when it comes to data science and people picking up data science, like one of the main concerns a lot of new students and also, I mean, people who are new to the whole industry, right? They want to find an ROI from their skill set. And yeah. one of the biggest ROI from the skill sets of picking up data science is when I study data science, I want to have a, a certificate, right? So yeah. that I can go and apply to a company, a company will accept me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in your case, right? I, I'm just curious, the, did the do, do your company appreciate that you you with your, your new skill sets in, in the company um so definitely uh you know i didn't show them that oh i have a cert or whatsoever <laughs> i didn't do all of that Good on but, you. I think <laughs> uh, but i think it's more of like uh how do you apply what you learn in your day-to-day job and if, if it makes sense you know if there is uh, impact that is given to, to your colleagues not only to your colleagues but you know to your merchants and to your bosses then it's naturally they would see hey, you know what this person is more well adapted for so and so role in the future. So instead of like sort of like projecting the what it should, yeah, projecting <laughs> the certificate to them, I think it's more of like what you do with the knowledge is important. Because certificate is just a certificate. At the end of the day, yeah. it's just a piece of paper. It's just like money. Right? It's just a piece of paper. You put too much value on it. But it's more of the end of the day. It's like what can you do with what you have gone through is important. Uh? So I think that that is that's something that I'm learning as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So most when it comes to data, right? A lot of a lot of companies they they are always I mean we always say this, or they're focused on two yeah. things, right? One is to yeah. increase revenue, yeah. and the second one is to decrease costs and to manage their costs of yep. operation, right? But mm. it seems like what you're doing is on the customers end, you're looking at you know helping customers instead of focusing on the company. Can you tell me more yep. about that? So because the role that I'm in, I deal with a lot of merchants day to day basis. I have about hundred plus merchants under my my wings so for me it's like my priority will always be about how can i help my merchants to uh, maximize their profit and reduce cost that is mm. that is that is what i'm looking at but of course uh 
eventually, eventually, what I will want to do is also help my company, you know, be more efficient and save costs in that sense, lah. Hmm. Right. So, like, uh, I mean, we've been running ads, and I feel like, you know, we've been doing a lot of ads for merchants. I think probably based on uh, what we have learned from the class, like using uh, linear regression, which ads actually makes the most sense. Where should you put most of your money at? You know. So these kind of things, I'm really, I have really acquired these skill sets from the class. Hmm. So it's only a matter of time where actually, you know, where I can present this to to the bosses to see how to optimize uh, revenue in that sense. Uh. Okay. Only a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, you know, we had this little exam during data science for sixty. Yeah. And when I look through the, the the scores, right, I think you are the highest in this in this class. <laughs> hey. No, Do you have no. any any study frameworks or anything that you can share with people? Uh, I think it's more of like uh, don't take it as a don't take it as if like it's a school exam. Uh, you will only learn if you want to learn. Uh, so take it as if like hey, you know what this is. You you have to have interest and passion. Enrollment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, enrollment. Yeah, you need to endowment. you need to have like. That 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 seriousness. I don't don't just do it just because you have to. Uh, that's that's why I would say. Yeah, I I think a lot of people take examinations wrong as like oh you know will this be on the test? If yes, then I will learn this. If not, I wouldn't learn it anymore. You know, they just want to pass the test to get that certificate. Oh, so so that's interesting, right? You see, during during our schooling days, right? Uh, we if you ask me about like sejarah now, I don't remember because it's like. <laughs> I mean, I remember bits and pieces, lah. But I don't remember everything. Is because we was just studying solely for the exams. You just yeah, want to yeah. pass, and you just want to get a cert, right? But if you if you take in context, like for example, you're learning something because you you can immediately apply it to your day to day life. That it makes sense. Like for example, I tell you why I can remember about logistic regression is because the whole point of HR. Because I have a HR team and I have colleagues that are leaving, you know, and and who you know, new colleagues that are coming in. So it's like. It is interesting when when you learn something, you 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 need to have like you need to draw that, that application that connection. Yeah, correct. Yes. Right. So when that. you when you learn something, what you're saying is when you learn something, you have to find a real case study to apply. Correct. It. Correct. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's that's one way how to learn better actually. Right. Right. I think you're lucky in in your case where you had this immediate you know case that you can apply immediately what you've learned into work and. What do you think that other people who do not have the same position as you, they can what they can do? What can they do on this? Same position as in like 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 you you already have like immediate case that you can actually apply what you have learned immediately yep. at work, right? Yeah. But, yep. but some people they don't have that kind of opportunity yet, uh, in right. the sense that they are not in the company yet, or the yep. company does not need this sort of like uh, you know, analysis methods for their customers. So what can they do? What do you think they can do? Okay, so. One way to go about this is the probably can you know go on Kaggle. Kaggle is a pretty Kaggle interesting. Only. Kaggle is pretty interesting because they have a lot of a lot of content that if you're serious about learning data, uh, and they have a lot of uh, projects that you can actually start working on. Uh, YouTube is is something that you can start as well. There there are many fun projects that you can actually mm-hmm. do with data analytics. Not only about or data science. It's not only about uh using it only for work purposes like i i right. i've done something for myself where i just web script top uh, top 10 places to eat in penang and i and i translate <laughs> and i translate that into a, a folio map where i i plot it out and then i i just send it to my friends it's like you know it could be done in a more fun way you know like it's right. pretty interesting mm-hmm. yeah it's pretty interesting yeah. I think at the end of the day, you define application with for what you learn. Yes. And yes. of course, learning also comes from self enrollment. Yep. I mean, you can't force someone to go to the, the gym, for example, and yeah. it, right? He yeah. or she has to have this self enrollment to Correct. go and lift the weights and Correct. make the change, right? So yeah. uh, maybe in the near future, we would get rid of examinations altogether. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Speaking of education and also growth, right? Imagine 2013, uh, that's about 10 years from now. Okay. Right? Where do you think you would be? 2030. Mm, 10 years from now, long mm, time. Interesting question. Probably, probably be much more leaner. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, in terms of work uh, and uh, the passion of learning, uh, I mean, I, I still believe that I probably would have. Um, you know, probably would be 
still be passionate about what I what I'm doing on my day to day job. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably have acquired skills as I mentioned to you about programming and stuff like that. But most importantly, I think it's uh, it, ten years from now I probably will want to share whatever I've learned with uh, with with the younger generations. Ah, uh, you know, so it could be teaching, could be guiding somebody, it could be mentoring somebody to achieve, uh, you know, their goals. So that's that's what I personally want for another ten years ahead. Mm. Yeah. So sales versus marketing analysis sort of role. Uh, which one do you find more confident? Marketing sounds more interesting. Oh. Because it, it's it's more of like uh, you need to understand consumer psychology, what makes people buy, what doesn't. Like there's there's a lot. People are amazing because it's like they constantly change. You see, so you need to be up to date. On what's the trend? What's not? Mm. Stuff like that. You need to read in between the lines because people are not so easily read. <laughs> what's what's one surprising thing you found in uh, your line of work, in based on human behavior and character? Uh, so we, I mean, I've been advising merchants on promotions, right? Like promotions. What makes, mm-hmm. Yeah, promotions. What makes sense? What doesn't? And you you see sometimes even if you offer uh, free items. People just don't get it, right? Because it's like <laughs> end of the day, it's the uh, perceived value. Yeah, yeah. How does the customer perceive? So you give them one free, uh, one free curry puff. For them, it's like what? What is one free curry puff? It's just <laughs> Fifty cents, you know. It's just that. Right. But so it's not only about giving free items. It's more of like why? How? How? How much is that item is valued by the customer? So a lot of things are to weigh, and you know, and also it's like the give and take. You know, I give you free item, but why are you giving me? Is that a minimum purchase? How much mm-hmm. do you set a minimum purchase? You know, so what what is the breakage? You know, like do you need a promo code? Do you don't need a promo code? You know, why do you need a promo code? So all of these questions that you want me to ask, and you know, sort of like see what makes sense. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Any huge success stories, uh, man? Huge success stories, not really huge, but more of like uh. Quite inspiring. It's more of like uh, to see my merchants who maybe one or two years ago they were just nobody, but now mm. they have transformed their business uh, fully online, and that's amazing. Uh. that's amazing for me. Yeah, because it's like growth uh, There's growth in them. Yeah. So assuming if I'm starting a F and B restaurant today, right? Uh, yeah. You're focused on F and B, right? F and B. Yep. Yeah, right. right. So let's say I'm starting an F and B. And I want to look for ways to market my brand and also to get people to try my food. Yeah. What would you do? What well, what would you advise me? Uh, you need to get a <laughs> you need to get a platform that you could actually sell your items on first, right? Uh, but I think most importantly is the awareness that uh, everything is an ecosystem. You mm. need to you need to set up your ecosystem. What do I mean by ecosystem? Meaning it's not only you being present on social media. Right. You right. also need to have a, a a place where your customer can convert your potential customer can convert to actual customer, and not only that, but also a place where you can collect data from this customer. Mm. Uh, so that's that's very important. So that's what we do in Auto. We basically we create this platform. A customer go in, they purchase. We collect mm. data for the merchants, right? So that is important because end of the day, if you don't have all of this, if you're just going to just sell, 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 but you you don't dive in deeper. On, who you're selling, what you're selling, when are you selling? Then eventually you you will lose out because you mm-hmm. want to make a business sustainable. F and B, it's not only about selling new cust to new customers, but you need to have repeated customers. So based on the data that we actually met, um, a business is considered sustainable, and F and B business is considered sustainable if twenty percent of your customers are repeated purchase, who contributes mm-hmm. to about forty to eighty percent of revenue. Forty to eighty percent of revenue to your business. Okay. From twenty percent of repeated customers. Twenty percent of repeated customers contributes forty to eighty percent of your revenue. That is considered healthy. That's like and the golden rule. That's the golden rule. And the importance of digital marketing. Previously, people think it's uh you know it's not as important, but we we saw that during uh COVID, uh businesses that thrive. Are businesses who were more willing to spend money on ads. Oh, know? okay, on ads. That, that that's interesting, right? Because we thought like, oh, even though the brand is it, it the brand has higher equity, but 
you you see the brands who make the most are the brands who actually spend money on ads because they are really spreading the awareness out there and it is 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 amazing that this business owner sort of like understood so they were the ones who actually sort of like they were doing better than than some other big brands out there also so it was mm. really eye opener so ever since that happened we saw a lot of merchants suddenly becoming more open to the idea of uh digital marketing what the importance of running ads on facebook and google and so on any tips on running ads on facebook i think for facebook what we have been doing for merchants is that uh, so customer data is important so okay. you cannot just blanketly just do ads just as it is you also have to understand like uh, some some of our customers they they think that boost ads is the same as targeted <laughs> facebook ads <laughs> All right. which is a misconception yeah, yeah both of both of this has different objectives right so Boost ads is more for awareness purposes. Mm. Uh, targeted ads is more for conversion purposes. So you want sales. You don't want people to like your post. You want yeah, money, yeah. right? So you go for Facebook targeted ads. The best thing to do is if you have already collected this customer data using custom audience, you create a lookalike audience and you go you, you and you go from that angle itself. So that hopefully you know by feeding that information to Facebook, Facebook gets you uh. Similar type of customers to, to purchase, uh. and conversion is uh, the probability of conversion is higher if you do that mm-hmm. instead of doing a blanket approach. But yeah, that's that's from what we we saw. I, I like what you shared on the the twenty percent of repeated customers that will give you the forty percent up to eighty yep. percent of revenue in the F and B business, right? And I think a lot of F and B businesses they don't actually track that, uh, mainly because they don't have a platform like Auto, maybe. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, and and for 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 order, right? Uh, what's the minimum size of a business to get onboarded? So we have uh, the, the spectrum is quite huge, right? So you have big brands, okay, fine, but also you have like brands who started who 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 are actually operating from uh house, like Central Kitchen. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. So it's like. You don't necessarily need to be like a huge super brand as long as you're committed to sort of like start a business online. Then yeah, you, you can by all means you can actually go for it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. And but yeah, the, the, like... the the twenty percent thing is pretty serious. Many of many of our merchants don't know that because they yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. the time. They don't really have the time to look through that. But I think it's pretty important to understand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if we can look at these numbers and feel like, oh, we're not hitting that twenty percent of people repeating. Our of the bison. Okay, what can we do to yes. increase that twenty percent? Right? Can we do yes. some retargeting campaigns or remarketing yes. or something yes. to win back customers? Yeah, and I think that's an an important metric to, to track that a lot of yeah. people do not do. So it is, it is. They they might have a lot of new customers coming in their doors, but after a while, it just exhausts. You know that that new cu- stream of new customers, and then it becomes harder and harder and more expensive yeah. to do marketing. Yeah. And yeah. finally, yeah, fails, right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a it, very good method. It is it is interesting, you know, because just to share with you, uh, uh many of our merchants who don't hit the don't hit the twenty percent repeated customer mark, they were like, why I don't hit twenty percent? Okay, now my I do promotion every week. I do promotion. I give them new promotion. Yeah, but, and they still don't hit that mark. So the question is, what what does it mean? The does it mean that you the more promotion you give, the better your repeated? No, it just creates more lalangs, more more customers who are just on the fence, right? Yeah, yeah. Sense. You want more loyal customers. That's basically what you want to attract. So, so that's sort of like is that's interesting. So again, back to the 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 consumer psychology, like why you know, that's why it's pretty interesting. Our marketing. Yeah, and and uh, what about for businesses that sells? Let's say like, I don't know. I mean, like, is that category that you track from uh savory food to F and B that sells only desserts. You know, desserts are something like more of a, it's more like a one instead of a need to yep. a lot of people like myself yep. maybe. Uh, yep. <laughs> but is there a segmentation or different types of? Uh, that or, is, yeah. Yep. Uh, how how do you go about that? So that is so we usually segment customers based on different categories. So you can be dessert, you know, it could be uh, halal or you know Chinese, you know. So we segment based on their food categories. And then you, you you tend to realize that it's it is not one shoe that fits all. Mm. Uh, different businesses they probably would need a different approach. Like for example, bakery merchants, uh, as you say, you know, uh, the basket size usually people just want to try. People want to buy one slice of cake. 
Okay, that's usually what we do. We go to grab, we open it, just click, and then we just order one slice of cake. But is that profitable to the, mm. the, the business? You know, uh, the, the aim is for cakes or people who sell bakery little items do in the form of uh, bulk purchases. That's, mm. that, that is where they make most of their money. Mm. So, so, so that's why we normally advise merchants, say, you know what, you should actually come out with uh, bulk, uh, bulk orders, bulk combos. You know, why combos make sense is because of this. Because it's to basically maximize your chances of profitability or so. Mm. Mm. I think there's so much to learn from numbers and data alone. I mean, what, what we have been discussing about involves yeah, yeah. looking at data, it involves analyzing data, it's simple yeah. and also complex wise. And yeah. yeah. So I, <clears throat> I think good takeaway is the, the golden rule of uh, yeah, golden rule. I think that's really important for FMP. Pareto principle, man. That's yeah, Pareto best. principle, yeah, 20 rule, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't take too much of your time. No worries, bro. I've learned a lot from you, but uh, one one last question from for, for yep. from me, right? Yeah. What would you advise, right? Um, people who want to take up data science. What will I advise to people yeah. who want to take up data science? If you can look at like maybe six eight months ago, what yeah. would you tell your former self? Uh. I would say take uh, one uh, take one thing at a time. Uh. Uh, don't overwhelm yourself with too many, because if you look at it, <clears throat> it's pretty huge, right? Mm. But you need to sort of like chunk it down to yeah. bits and pieces, and you know, then slowly consume, and then eventually you realize you probably understand most of it. But the more, the, uh, probably I also would say that just because you know some few things doesn't make you a genius, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like yeah. you need to you need to be you need to have humility, uh, humble, uh, you know. It, it's like the more you are, the more you read something, the more you understand that oh shit, I don't know what I'm <laughs> I don't know what is that's it exactly. Paradox, isn't it? Yeah, the that's more paradox. you learn, the more you know you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's interesting. So if if the only advice I probably I give my uh, I mean my past self is that hey bro, just take it easy one step at a time. Uh. Yeah. That's mm. what I would probably say. Okay. All right, all right. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think I've learned a lot from you. Yep. Um, especially as a marketer, I think one of the best things is again the, the Pareto rule in, yep. in coming to F and B and more. Yep. Uh, so again, thanks again for being in this session. Um, hope to see you doing more amazing things. All right, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank right. you. All right.